Bob Duco, Evangelical Christian Radio talk show host and apologist, asserts that Jesus' birth in Bethlehem was a fulfillment of Old Testament prophecy about the future Messiah, supporting his assertion that the Bible is true. It was prophesied in the Old Testament in Micah 5.2 that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Think about that. You know, Bethlehem, 2,000 years ago, was a tiny little town. Yet hundreds of years before the Messiah came, the actual little town that he would be born in would be prophesied. If you just think of this in secular terms, what are the odds that anyone is going to make a prediction like this, pick the right town, and then someone comes along, claims to be the Messiah, as Jesus Christ did? And what exactly is Bob's evidence that Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Well, we of course see in Luke 2 that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. In other words, Ducal again uses the Bible to prove the Bible, just as he did to prove the truth of the Bible's claim of Jesus' descent from King David. It's a dog chasing its own tail and a violation of logic and good reasoning, two standards Bob claims to uphold. The fact is, the so-called fulfillment of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem is an example of the Gospel authors deliberately inventing a tradition to fulfill a prophetic expectation. In other words, the prophecy of Micah 5.2 was not fulfilled by Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, but the Bethlehem birth itself was invented to fulfill the prophecy, to equate Jesus with the expected Jewish Messiah. Only two Gospels record that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, Matthew and Luke, and both narratives are in conflict with one another. Matthew has the family already living in Bethlehem at Jesus' birth and eventually moves them in his narrative to Nazareth. Matthew's story opens in chapter 2 with wise men coming from the east to Jerusalem at the time of King Herod, inquiring about the birth of a child who was to become king of the Jews because they had seen his sign, a star rising in the sky. This news of a newborn king frightened Herod and the rest of Jerusalem for some unknown reason, and he quizzed the Jewish chief priests and scribes to tell him what the scriptures said about the birth of the Messiah. He was told the prophecy of Micah 5.2, that the Messiah was to come from Bethlehem. Herod then sent the wise men on their way, asking them to return and tell him where the child could be found so he too could go and worship him. The wise men left and continued to follow the mobile star until it came to rest over a house. The wise men entered, found Jesus and his family, and presented gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Warned in a dream not to return to Herod, the wise men returned instead directly to their own kingdoms. Herod learned of this betrayal and ordered that every male child, two years and younger, was to be put to death in Bethlehem and its surrounding region, just to assure that Jesus was murdered and no usurper would steal Herod's crown. Warned in a dream by an angel about Herod's murderous intent, Joseph uprooted his family and took them to Egypt to hide. After Herod died, Joseph was again approached in a dream by an angel and told it was safe to return to the land of Israel. Joseph and his family returned, but learned Herod's son, Archelaus, had become ruler over Judea, and so to avoid resettling there, they went instead to the Galilee, to the small town of Nazareth even though Herod's other son, Antipas, was ruling this region. It is unclear what Matthew believed Joseph was gaining or leaving behind by moving under Antipas instead of Archelaus. Luke's version of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem is much different. Luke's gospel has the family originating in Nazareth and only coming to Bethlehem temporarily for a census. According to Luke, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that the entire empire should be registered. For reasons unstated, people returned to their ancestral homes for the census. Luke states that Joseph went from his town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. While there, his wife Mary went into labor and gave birth to Jesus either outside or perhaps in a barn or other shelter for animals. For Luke records Mary laying the newborn child in a manger, which was a feeding trough carved from wood or stone for livestock. 
He states there was no room at any inn to accommodate the family, as the city was overwhelmed with David's descendants returning for the Roman census. In essence, then, Jesus' birth in Bethlehem was accidental, and he really was not a citizen of that city. Regardless, immediately following the birth, shepherds in a nearby field are told of Jesus' arrival by an angel, and they come to visit the child. Eight days go by, and the time comes in Jewish custom to have the child circumcised, which Joseph and Mary do. The time then arrives for the parents to present the newborn at the temple in Jerusalem and offer sacrifices as per another Jewish custom, and the family travels to Jerusalem. Once these customs are observed, Luke reports that the family returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, where the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. No mention of wise men, no mention of a traveling star, no murderous King Herod, and no trip to Egypt. Interestingly, this emphasis on Jesus' birth in Bethlehem is completely absent in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke outside their infancy narratives. Everywhere else in these Gospels, Jesus is referred to as Jesus of Nazareth, or Jesus the Nazarene. If Jesus really had been born in Bethlehem, why did all recognition of this important prophecy-fulfilling fact disappear from the later narratives? It's rather obvious that the true tradition of Jesus' origins were in Nazareth, and the authors of Matthew and Luke had to invent ways to get Jesus born in Bethlehem to fulfill expectations of the Messiah coming from the city of David, concocting stories for their infancy narratives, but reverting back to the older tradition throughout the rest of their Gospels. Then there is the problem of the Gospel of John. John makes no mention of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem whatsoever. In fact, the only mention of Bethlehem seems to argue that Jesus was not born there, in John chapter 7, verses 40 through 44, a crowd is arguing whether or not Jesus was the expected Messiah. Some thought that he was. Others, in verses 41 and 42, disagree by blatantly arguing. Surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? The section concludes in verse 43, with the Gospel's author stating, So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Not a single person in the crowd, not even the author of the Gospel, offers up an argument that Jesus was in fact born in Bethlehem, fulfilling the prophecy of Micah 5.2. Not a peep about the mysterious wise men coming from the east. Nothing about a strange wandering star that hovered over the famed city of David. No mention of Herod's murder of the innocents. Nothing to remind the doubters of the miraculous events several years earlier which would have silenced the critics and argued for Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. There simply is no reasonable way to harmonize the two accounts of Jesus' birth narrated in Matthew and Luke, although apologists through the centuries have tried. In addition, historical problems abound with the infancy narratives. For example, there is no record, Roman or otherwise, for an empire-wide census which would have brought Joseph's family from Nazareth to Bethlehem, per the Gospel of Luke. Apologists are not short in the contrivance of a great number of explanations for why the census cannot be found in any extra-biblical material, some even at variance with one another. But in the end, no such evidence for the census is ever solidly produced to silence the critics. As biblical scholar Raymond E. Brown has concluded, such contrivances are dubious on almost every score, despite the elaborate attempts by scholars to defend Lucan accuracy. Apologists may attempt to point out that where sufficient archaeological evidence has surfaced, Luke has been shown to be remarkably accurate in his descriptions of first century Judea. Apologists note that skeptics frequently level charges against Luke and the other biblical authors on what they feel are merely arguments from silence. In other words, a skeptic will say the census mentioned in Luke is an error of the text, based solely on the fact that no record of such a census has ever been found in extra-biblical material. The problem here isn't just that there is no extra-biblical evidence to corroborate the Lucan census, but that the convenience of such a census for Luke's purposes, to get Jesus born in Bethlehem to fulfill the prophecy of the expected Messiah, and the ridiculous call to have people uprooted from their current homes to travel to their ancestors' cities of origin, is unprecedented in any Roman account of any other known census. These are the factors, in addition to the lack of any corroborating evidence that the Lucan census took place, which drive the skepticism. From the 6th century BCE following the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem, 
the Jewish people had migrated from Judea across the Eastern Mediterranean. Large communities of Jews established themselves in most of the major cities, including Alexandria, Antioch, and even Rome itself. For all these people to leave their homes, some of which had ties to their adoptive cities stretching back centuries to travel to a long dead ancestor's city of origin, is absolutely absurd. According to the first century historian Josephus, there were as many as 1,100,000 killed when Rome destroyed Jerusalem in 70 CE, along with 97,000 sold into slavery. Jerusalem was sieged during the festival of Passover, when Jewish pilgrims from around the empire converged on the temple in the city for the celebration. The majority of the over one million would not have been residents of Jerusalem, but like the returning descendants, for Luke's census, gathered from across the realm for the festival. Didn't anyone other than Luke take notice of this historic mass exodus of Jewish communities from Antioch, Alexandria, or Rome for an unprecedented census? Additionally, Roman taxation worked on a provincial basis. While Quirinius, who had been appointed governor of Syria, which included the province of Judea, by the emperor Augustus following the banishment of Herod Archelaus, did indeed carry out a survey of Judea in 6 CE when it became a province, according to New Testament chronology, Jesus would have been about 10 years old during this census. According to Luke, Jesus was born when Herod the Great was still king of Judea, and Herod is known to have died in 4 BCE. How could there have been a Roman census ordered while Herod was still king? For what purpose? Besides, the Quirinian survey would not have reached Nazareth, where Luke places the family, as the town was not part of a Roman province. But even if it had been, subjects were taxed on the land in the villages in which they currently lived. They would not have been summoned or required to return to their ancestral homes where they had no current interests, especially for the purposes of taxation. For all these reasons, and many others, it is reasonable to conclude that Jesus was likely born in Nazareth, and these traditions placing Jesus' birth in Bethlehem were created precisely to make it seem as if Jesus had fulfilled the prophecy of Micah 5.2, calling into question the truth of the Bible with respect to the place of Jesus' birth. Funding for this program was provided in part by the generous contributions of viewers like you via Patreon. Consider joining them at www.patreon.com forward slash Bible Skeptic. Thank you.